been interesting this time. So this laptop is uh, is, is running uh, running Xen. Um, this is uh, just one virtual machine that uh, uh, is my personal virtual machine. It happens to have the GPU passed through to the virtual machine, so it's getting the full graphics performance of the machine. So I can uh, use uh, uh, you know uh, Windows uh, Aero and all of the uh, you know usual uh, usual things. I was just playing a, a high definition video there. Let's just uh, uh, stop that. But it's the you really are getting the native performance of the machine um, running uh, in this environment. And then I'm actually running multiple uh, virtual machines here. If I go up to this, uh, this switching bar, I can select to, uh, uh, to switch to a different environment. So I can click on this and switch to uh, my business environment. And in here, I could have you know confidential uh, business data or, or whatever, and this environment would be completely isolated uh, from that other environment. So even if my personal environment got infected with uh, uh, malware, then it would uh, it would still be uh, everything that was in this virtual machine would still be uh, safe and secure. So I can uh, switch back again, and. There's just one other thing I, uh, I, I want to show you with, the, with this uh, uh, client hypervisor demo, and that is that uh, uh, an example of how having the hypervisor can increase uh, security. So even within my personal virtual machine, um, you know, it, it, it may have become infected with malware, and in fact, uh, it, it has, in that I have a um, a very benign. Uh, piece of malware which has infected this machine. That if I were to go to this website and to uh, uh, you know to try logging on, you see everything I type is being logged in this window at the top of the screen. This is a key logger that could be sending that data to uh, to some bad guys, but it's uh, just printing it in a, in a window. Um, and of course, the key logger could capture uh, my password. But if I go down uh, here, I can select a secure Internet Explorer. And that will actually launch that Internet Explorer running in a different virtual machine. But, and we can see the, uh, the, the green border here. Then I can um, go to my, uh, uh, my bank account. Unfortunately, the network here is a little uh, bit slow, I guess, because all of you guys are, uh, are using it right now. Let's just wait for that. Uh, uh, that website to load, but if I'm, uh, you'll see that when I uh, try and log in, uh, I type into this virtual machine, then the keyboard logger will not manage to capture those keystrokes because as soon as I, uh, you know, click on this window, um, the keyboard and mouse will be routed to that virtual machine, so that the personal virtual machine doesn't get the opportunity to intercept those keystrokes. It is slowly, uh, slowly downloading it. So uh, if I could just type in one of the boxes here, if you see if I'm t everything I type is not being captured by the keylogger because the um, yeah, those keystrokes just don't go to that virtual machine. They go to this separate virtual machine where this web browser is, uh, is running. So now I said I would show you the, uh, uh, the uh, Remus uh, work for the, uh, the hardware fault tolerance. So let's uh, just pull up a, a web browser here. Now, this uh, demo is actually running uh, in the uh, Vancouver office. And what I'm going to do is, while I'm, I'm talking here, I'm going to protect, press this button called Protect VM. And yes, we want to protect the VM. So there are, are two Zen nodes separated by 350 kilometers. One is in Vancouver. Um, one is in a, a town called Kaloops, and they're connected by the uh, just the public internet. And when I press that protect VM, what's happening now is a another copy of that virtual machine um, is being created in Kaloops, and it's synchronizing the memory image between those two virtual machines. And when that uh, protect VM um, button um, goes, uh, you know, uh, 
Oh, well, it's already, the synchronization's already uh, happened now by the looks of it. It's now created a, a copy on that other machine in, uh, in Colludes, and they're now both running, or, or, or the state as it runs in Vancouver is continually being synchronized to Colludes. So let's, uh, let's log in to, uh, to that virtual, uh, virtual machine. Ah, you can see that uh, at long last, uh, this web page is downloaded, so just while we're here, I will uh, show you that uh, if I, uh, yeah, everything I type here is not being captured by that, uh, that keylogger. Anyway, let's, um, let's get a, a connection up. Fortunately, I didn't have time to set anything, uh, anything pretty up, uh, again, connecting to that virtual machine, so we'll just, uh, we'll just log into it. So we'll, we'll log in, and uh, uh, I, just, I, I was going to run a nice frac uh, program showing, uh, you know, a frac rendering, but uh, we haven't got time for that. So let's uh, let's just do a very simple uh, loop here. Um, God, the network uh, connection here over the wireless is really uh, really struggling. I hope this uh, this is going to work. I just typed away and it hasn't. Uh, hasn't echoed it, echoed back. Let's hope it catches up. So if you're using the wireless network, can you uh, just stop for a second and uh, <laughs> let me use it? Oh, this is a... Uh... This is just going too slow to, uh, to be usable. Oh, well, we might have to, what I'll do is I'll, uh, I'll, I'll hit the button uh, anyway, and uh, you won't, it will be harder to see because we won't be doing anything in the, uh, in, in the VM, but you'll be able to see that my typing uh, is left exactly how it was in the, uh, in the VM when we do the failover. So if I, uh, press, when I press this button here, it's going to cut the power to the machine in Vancouver. But the machine in Kaloops will have had the synchronized uh, state. Okay, let's see. If, let's just give it one more, uh, one more go here. Okay, let's come back a little bit. One in the square bracket. Okay, so uh, it's not exactly updating in real time because of the uh, the network. So this is uh, is counting away. What you what you wouldn't normally be able to see is that when we uh, when we do the failover, you wouldn't wouldn't be able to notice that the failover has happened because it would be counting so uh, so smoothly. But uh, even before we're doing the failover, it's uh, it's struggling here just because of the uh, the network connection. So you'll have to uh, have to take my word for it that it's actually a very smooth failover. But anyway, when I click this button here, it's literally <coughs> going to cut the power to the machine in Vancouver. And then, what we uh, are doing is we're, because this is across the wide area, these machines are separated by 350 kilometers uh, across the public internet. We're actually going to use BGP to update the routing table so that the IP address will move to the machine in, uh, in Palouse but uh, all of the routing in the, across the wide area will then be set up to cope with that IP address moving. So I'm going to press the, the button. You can see the little Google Maps there of showing the machine is currently in Vancouver. And this map is, uh, is being updated by doing a trace route. So when it moves, uh, when the trace route changes, it will then update where the, uh, where the VM is. So if I, if I press the button, so we can uh, power cycle the machine in Vancouver. And it's happened. You wouldn't uh, wouldn't know this. This machine is uh, well, next time it updates. You see, it's continuing to count. That virtual machine hasn't rebooted. It's just seamlessly uh, carried on running, but in this new location. So that machine in Vancouver has been rebooted, um, and this trace route has just updated, showing that that uh, machine is now running 
uh, in Kaloops. And that whole switchover would have been, uh, you know, the actual switchover time is, is typically about 50 milliseconds. And all of the users of that particular virtual machine would probably not have noticed that anything has happened. So anyway, we think this is a, a great new feature for, for Zen and a, an exciting thing to have in, uh, in Zen 4.0. Uh, 